Welcome back. The population of mobile and web application developers has continued to increase as the number of mobile apps in the market hit new heights. These mobile app startups, in the course of their job, are faced with a variety of challenges, making it easy for them to get overwhelmed and lose focus of where their energies should be directed. Well, our guest, the managing director of WeDrive, Akinbolaji Akintori, sheds more light on the challenges facing mobile and web app developers and as well how best they can tackle them. Welcome to the program. Thank Thank you for having me. So first tell us, what about mobile and web app developers? What are they? All right. Uh, a mobile app developer is somebody who will take the software requirements of the client and translate them into a workable programming code to solve any, any, host, of any host of needs. So maybe you have an issue that you need to solve using technology. It's the app developer that will help you to convert your requirements into an app. How technical is, is it doing that? And you know, because how do we find that there are challenges that you know web developers, app developers face? Well, it's quite technical. You need to have a lot of background knowledge and experience because you'll be working with different programming codes and different programming la um, languages and platforms. So the more experience you have, the easier it is to be able to create a workable, efficient. Okay, so what are the challenges? Well, uh, there, are, there are various challenges which can all be summed up into one. That's basically understanding what the customer wants. Now, some of these challenges within this over, overarching challenge are being able to understand your target market, being able to select the right kind of app, the right kind of programming language, the right platform that you want to use. Those are the kind of challenges that you face. Then funding challenges, because developing an app is not cheap. It takes a lot of time, it takes a lot of effort, and it takes a lot of money. What's the difference between an app developer in Africa and those in the West? Well, it's all a matter of resources. Those in the West have way more resources than we do, and also about infrastructure. They have better networks, they have better bandwidth, they have access to, uh, to more efficient um, infrastructure that, is, that can support their development. Um, like here, we all know the challenges we have with our network and our data. We also know the challenges that we have in raising funds, whereas abroad it's a lot easier to raise funds when you want to develop an app. How about app developers who are here and take a lot of job coming in from outside, you know, the West and the rest, and turn down those who offer them whatever it is they do, offer them here? Well, it's, it comes down to a matter of cost and also um, personal challenge. Because what happens is that, as I said, it's easier to raise finances over there and they have a more realistic expectation of how much it would cost to develop an app. Whereas here in Nigeria, most people want the cheapest um, option, but they want the best quality. So if you had to choose between taking an, an off-site job or taking an, uh, a job within Nigeria, most, most developers would go. How are, start abroad. how are startups surviving? Well, it hasn't been easy. Uh, WeDrive is a startup that based on technology. We built the app in-house. We built it in Nigeria here. and. Um, it's, it's, it takes a lot of dedication and diligence. It takes a lot of determination. And you, 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 as I said, when we're mentioning challenges, you have to understand your target market. You have to understand what your app does. You have to understand how to reach your target market. So like WeDrive, we've, 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 spent a lot, we've done a lot of research into our target market. We've done a lot of research into making the app as efficient and easy to use as possible. But I, I want to say that things are improving in Nigeria. The infrastructure is getting better. We have a lot of, so, uh, we have more support okay. than we had before. Okay. So. Projections for the future, especially for Nigerian app developers. Oh, it's, it's fantastic. It's fantastic. You always have to look at our population. I'm sure that is, uh, that's something that has been mentioned over and over again. When you look at our population, we, we, we have, and, and you look at the, the current um, uptake, the current usage of technology, you know, there's, we still have a long way to go. I'd, I'd even say like Nigeria, we have the highest potential growth rate for adoption of apps and... All right, thank you so much. It's been a pleasure project. talking to thank you, you on Network Africa, me. the Managing Director of WeDrive, Akim Bolaji, Akim Toye. Thank you for having me.
And encouraged by success in East Africa, off-grid solar power startups are pouring into West Africa, offering pay-as-you-go kits in a race to claim hundreds of millions of customers who lack reliable access to electricity. The suburb of Yopuyan in Ivory Coast economic capital Abidjan may not be connected to the country's power grid, but it's perfectly located for solar power entrepreneurs. Jean-Noel Kouame and his family are amongst the first beneficiaries of solar power in Ivory Coast, provided by the Dutch off-grid developer Lumos Global. With his solar panel kit, Kwame says he now has indoor lighting and can also use an electric fan and a television. Every day, I see new people coming to ask me how I get to have electricity and how does it work. I told them how, and word has spread around and more people have come to ask me how I got electricity. That's how my neighbor went to buy one for himself as well. Lumos Global Kits, which cost about $600, include a solar panel linked to a battery that supports power sockets, a mobile phone adapter, and LED light bulbs. According to the International Energy Agency, some 1.2 billion people around the world have no access to a power grid. Lighting and phone charging alone cost them about $27 billion a year, and some estimate puts their total annual energy cost at more than $60 billion. IEA figures show that while the governments in much of the developing world are extending access to national networks, Africa is lagging with less than 40% of African households connected. Last year, Lumos expanded into Ivory Coast, French-speaking West Africa's largest economy. It launched in Nigeria in 2016 and by the end of 2017 had sold 73,000 kits and was averaging 16% month-on-month revenue growth. At the beginning, it worked well. When I first heard about this, I said this would be great for the poor people. We were told about the fact that we could use it for up to five years, but I have not been able to benefit from it. This is very discouraging. Pay-as-you-go solar home systems like Kwame and Konas have been the main driver of off-grid power expansion in Africa. And finally, three African countries, Uganda, Gabon and Botswana, have put their names to a global clamor calling for an end to the trade of antique ivory. Presidents of the countries are asking Britain and the rest of the EU to ban the legal trade. At a wildlife summit in Botswana, the country's president, Ankama, said a complete trade ban would help protect the remaining elephants. Thousands of African elephants have been continually killed by poachers every year, despite international efforts to stop the trade in ivory. Botswana is the last sanctuary for the animals. Half of Africa's elephants are found there and just over its borders. And that's Network Africa for the week. Many thanks for watching. I'm Millicent Walker.